Let me go ahead and show you some of the other goodies that I have in the other room that I haven't shown you guys yet. Yo, what's going on guys, and welcome back to the channel. So Evelyn and I are about to head off to Malacca for a few days to kind of get away from the city for a little while, but before we go, I actually wanted to record a quick update video for you guys about the Safira and what I have going on. As you guys probably saw in the title of the video, there are some big changes happening in the Safira that I wasn't originally planning, but I decided to kind of make a few a few updates or a few changes. So I also received a package with a few other parts for the Sephiro from Japan, as well as I picked up some things from a local vendor called N6T Auto Parts. This guy is really cool, his name's Nissan. He is also one of the local guys who has all these different RB20, RB25, SR parts for a lot of the guys here in the local KL area. Even if you're living internationally and you're looking for some Sephiro parts, you can definitely hit him up on his Facebook page. I'll leave it down in the description area below, and you guys can go ahead and contact him and see what kind of deals you can work out. I mean, I'm telling you, he's got RB20 parts, RB25, SR, Sylvia parts, I mean all sorts of things that are kind of hard to come by nowadays. Now before I go ahead and open up this box and see what's inside, I wanted to let you guys know that Evelyn and I are both going to be over in Penang on November 2nd and November 3rd. The guys over at Oil Zag invited us out to come out for another event where they're going to be running another vehicle with no oil in it for 200 kilometers. Last time we went out there they had a diesel truck where they completely emptied out all the oil with nothing but their additive running inside of it and the car ran, or I'm sorry, the truck ran for 200 kilometers across Penang and didn't have one issue with overheating, breaking down, nothing. So this time, they're actually gonna be doing the exact same challenge except this time in a, in a compact car, which to me I think is gonna be a little bit more re uh, relatable to a lot of the people that are probably watching this channel. So anyway, I'm gonna be out there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple clips in here so you guys can remind yourselves of what happened that day when we did the oil zag run. <laughs> About 40 more kilometers before we get back to the shop and my overall impression is just amazement I mean I've never seen anything like this if you guys want to go ahead and check out the full video I'll leave a link to it up above and you guys can go ahead and check it out after this video but anyway let's go ahead and see what's inside the box now I've actually been receiving a lot of these packages over the last month and a half or so for the Sephira that I've been putting in that room I haven't really been shown any of it to be honest because it's mostly just like interior parts or things to kind of fix things that were broken on the car I mean they're nothing that exciting but to me they're super exciting because taking this car from what it was to something what is I'm expecting it to be or what I'm hoping it's going to turn out is what's like to me I mean probably the whole reason why most of you guys are in, even here watching is because you want to see something old getting it to start, turn something a little bit nicer so anyway let's go ahead and open it up see what's inside all right let's see what's inside to be honest I don't even remember what's in this box I've had so many packages coming in and out of the out of the country and ah man I I don't even honestly remember everything that I ordered. Okay, so it's not all just newspaper. I wish I could read Japanese so I could actually enjoy reading that. All right, so I do remember this one. So this piece right here, let's see if I can get it out of the way here. This piece right here, well actually there are two pieces here. These I think are my pillar covers that I broke when I was taking out my old dashboard. <laughs> so I definitely need to check those out. Let's see, and... I have, I love how they have all this newspaper, man. I actually, use, I don't throw this away, I actually keep all this, so when I do ship out parts that I buy and sell, then I have something to use to ship with. Ah, I know what this is. This is a heater core for the Sephiro because my car didn't come with any sort of heating whatsoever. So, I know probably a lot of you guys from here in Malaysia are going to think like, well, you don't even need heating here or a heater here in Malaysia. It's already hot enough. But, you know, with my job, I'm actually only contracted here for a couple of years, so I'm not exactly going to be able to stay here forever. So with that, I'm actually going to end up exporting the car with me wherever I go. That's the whole reason why I'm kind of like rebuilding it and putting a lot of time and effort into it because I don't want it to just be like something I do and I fix and then I just sell or get rid of. I actually really want to keep this car. So the plan is to try to get this car running to a point where even if I go to somewhere cold, so say like back in the United States, I can actually have heating in the car and it's not going to be a big problem. So anyway, 
Let's keep going through it. So I got the heater core. I'm gonna open up all these packages so you guys can see the condition. There's still one more thing in here that I got. Uh, oh, okay, I think I remember what this is. This is the interior panel that mine was not, was missing a piece from it. So let's go ahead and open these up here now too. 12 seconds later. All right, finally got everything opened up. Let's go ahead and check them out. So we have the heater core, which is right here. And it's in really, really good condition. Obviously it's a little dirty. And this actually has a little bit of water still left inside of it. I spilled some of it on my hand and it smells oddly like ramen. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But it actually is in really, really good condition, which I'm very happy about. Again, this is not something I could easily find here in Malaysia, so I'm glad I was able to pick this up. And in fact, this piece and this piece actually come from the same car. Well, the same car as the, the intercooler and well, honestly, well, tons of stuff I'm gonna show you guys inside that room. A lot, all, pretty much all of this comes from the exact same car. It's pretty funny how that happened, but anyway. Uh, so we have this, which is cool. It has the electronic trunk release button, but I don't have the pieces for that yet. I might actually see if I can get those. I actually know a guy that actually sells that, so I might try to get that. Then, I actually had this button too which goes with something else that I have in the room, which I can show you guys here in a little bit. And then it's got the electronic sports control or the comfort mode for the steering, uh, not the steering, for the uh, suspension. But what I really just needed this piece mostly for was this panel right here. It's black. The one that I had in my car for some reason was brown, but honestly, I just think this whole piece in itself is in better condition than the one that I have in the room. And then these were the things that I broke when I was trying to take out my dashboard and I was so lucky that I ended up finding a pair for super, super cheap. I think I paid like 40 ringgit or something like that from, from Japan. And all of the clips are still in one piece. Wow, this one's missing one up here. But that's pretty common. These things tend to break very easily. See, this one has it. These tend to break very easily when you try to pull them out, which yeah, I don't even know how these things even came out without breaking, aside from that one. But that's okay. That little piece up there is not going to make a big difference with all the other clips. But I still have more stuff to show you. Let's go ahead and see what's in the bag and see what I got from N60 Auto Parts. Right, so let's see what's inside the bag here. I got lots of little things in here. So the first one we have is something that I was looking for that my car didn't come with. Well, I should say my engine didn't come with. This one has... If you guys can try to figure out what it is, let me grab my scissors. This is the piece that I needed. And you know what, let me, hook, let me go ahead and just open it up real quick. So this is what I ended up picking up. I mean, I ended up getting the whole fuel rail and there's a second uh, pressure regulator back there. But the main thing I needed was this front fuel pressure regulator piece right here. I didn't have this on my car. I guess when they had the original motor in the previous owner's car, whatever the case is, they actually hooked it directly up or they had an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator. But since my car is completely stock, I didn't want to have to go and buy a new pressure regulator, so I ended up finding a used one with all of the tubing. Now, this is the part that was really hard to find. I mean, who just sells this? I mean, this hose, obviously, I can replace that. I have ho uh, replacement hoses for the gas line, but this piece right here, and well, mostly just this piece right here, this is the part that is really hard to find. I mean, you can't just normally find this. You normally have to buy the complete fuel rail. So luckily, he had this in stock just sitting on a shelf and he ended up selling it to me for a really good deal. Next thing I got was another small tiny piece but something I really really needed. I could find it. Oh, just right here in my hand. <laughs> uh, was this oil pressure sensor right here. This thing was completely broken in my car. And in fact, this one is in fully perfect working condition. Mine actually had this whole piece broken off and all you could see was like the little sensor bit inside. So there was nothing really connected to it. So this little piece is another nice little come up. These things are hard to find. And he had this one also just laying around. So he's like, yeah, you know what? I'll hook you up. So he sold me this one too. And then the most important thing that I needed, that he had, was this. This is the third transmission bracket that I've gotten for this car, but this is the one that I've been looking for, the one with 
the B stamp here. Let's see if I can bring it back around this way. You guys can see it right here. This has a letter B in it. That means that this comes from a Sylvia chassis. These actually come in the S13, S14, and S15. This, for some reason, is the bracket that you need when you're doing an auto to manual swap for a Sephiro. Why the, the manual one doesn't work for the, like, buying a manual bracket from a manual Sephiro, I don't know why, from what I've been reading online, is that they don't bolt up to the chassis at all. No idea why, but the S13 one does. So, Ended up picking this one up. I'm actually, my plan was to originally hook it up this week, but Evelyn wanted to go on vacation and we had a few days off because of Deepa Bali, so we're gonna go ahead and just travel over to Malacca for a few days and I'll be back here on Saturday. So my goal is to try to see if I can put it in on Saturday, but you know, we'll have to wait and see, but. Let me go ahead and show you some of the other goodies that I have in the other room that I haven't shown you guys yet. So before I go ahead and explain why I actually said there's some big changes coming along for the Sephiro. You remember a long time ago I ended up buying an S15 Sylvia Dash, right? Well, I decided to go ahead and sell it. I wanted to hook it up and put it in because the original plan was to put an S15 SR20 into the Sephiro. It was so hard to find an S15 chassis, um, not a chassis, an S15 motor set up here in Malaysia that I gave up on the idea. So I said, you know what, forget it. I'll go ahead and just sell the, mo um, sell the Dash and I decided to buy a different dash. In fact, I have one over in Japan waiting to come over here that is for the A31, but it's not an A31 dash. My A31 dash is sitting over in that corner over there. It's all cracked up and gross and it, it just was not appealing and it just was not going to be something I want to put into the car after all the stuff that I ended up buying for it to clean up the interior. So I ended up finding a really nice clean dash that I wanted to put in the car. Some of you guys might know what it might be. I'll give you a hint. It is a Nissan Dash. Go ahead and leave it down in the comments below if you can guess what it is. It's probably going to be here sometime next week. I would I would guess sometime next week. I'm not 100% sure, but it's got I got to go through customs and taxes cuz it was it's a little expensive, but yeah, whatever. It was worth it to me. So, anyway, I'll go ahead and show you guys some of the stuff that I have here. I have all of this stuff, well this is for the S15 dash setup that I actually have a buyer for. Hopefully it all goes through. No, that, that's just kidding. That's for the A31. All of that stuff is for the S15. And then the S15 dash down here. That I was really, really wanting to put in the car, but oh well. Ch plans change. So this thing, alright, so Dave and I actually ended up driving to Thailand. I don't know if you guys remember this story about three months ago, something like that. We drove to Thailand because I wanted to buy a couple things from there because that's like the Sephiro Haven over there. I don't know why they have so many awesome parts for, for the Sephiro, but whatever the case, they do. So I ended up meeting a guy who's got a lot of really good parts. So we ended up picking up this dash panel, or I'm not dash panel, rear deck lid that, I don't know, I thought, you know, when I originally was looking at this, I thought it was some sort of air conditioner or something for the rear back seat, but I think it's actually a speaker, now that I think about it. The reason why I thought it was an air conditioner is because it came with this little fan control. Now, I'm not exactly sure, let's see if I can get it to focus here, what this switch does now. <laughs> because everything that I've found online is all about this being some sort of speaker. I don't know. I'm going to take it apart. There's a way to take it apart from the bottom. I just haven't done it. It's been sitting here for like two months. And then I have a, uh, what do you call this? Like a, um, I don't know, just a real, the, the, or whatever, the rear visor, the mirror visor thing. Just call it that. The rear visor, the mirror thing. And all of these are in really, really good condition. Again, these came from that same car that all those other parts came from that I got from Japan. I mean, the condition is just like perfect. Mine are all cracked or yellow and broken so I've got a full set of that and there's even some other lights and stuff that go with it then this is the glass panel that I got for the car that goes with this that I got in Thailand so the reason why I got it, it has the rear wiper I really like those I think it just adds a little bit more character to the cars that I don't know I just I don't know I think it does I think it's like it looks really nice so then I ended up picking one of these up I can't really get over there but I ended up picking up that from the same car in Japan, that is from an automatic, but I'm gonna mod it to where I can use the handbrake. That's my old one over there. That's my old dash setup. I actually have the Kuki setup that goes with this um, coming in Japan. <laughs> so I got a lot of stuff just sitting in Japan. That's my old panel right there. All of these seat belts and everything, mine are really gross and brown and stained. And actually, I don't even have the rear seat belts. I guess in Malaysia they didn't come with they didn't come with seat belts in the rear seats. I don't know. I thought that was kind of interesting. Dave was explaining to me there wasn't, I guess, a law or something back then. 
that they didn't have to have them as a requirement, so my car doesn't have them, but I really wanted them because I don't want my passengers to die in the back seat. <laughs> so, small thing. And then we have, if you guys remember, I bought, this was actually the very first thing I bought for the car, is that East Bear grill, brand new from East Bear in Japan. And then I have a great steering wheel that I bought from my S2000 a long time ago, but I'm probably not gonna put it in the car. I don't know, I haven't quite figured if I wanna use that or get something else like a Nardi or something. And then, Series 2 taillights. Really like these, I think they're really clean. Uh, I actually ended up picking those up in Thailand as well when I got all this other stuff here. And let's see, the wiper motor. Uh, here's that brown one I was telling you about. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell in the dark here in, the, in this lighting, but this is actually a brown one. I don't know, just didn't match. And I figured if I'm spending all this money on all these other clean parts, why skimp on the little things? And then over here, a lot of these boxes I have an R34 GTT AC condenser that I'm trying to sell. It's an AC condenser and a blower. That was again for another dash project that I was thinking of doing, but ended up changing my mind. So that's for sale. I've got that on Facebook, I think for sale, somewhere. And then, ooh, I have new mirrors because my mirrors are broken. So these also come from that same car. Um, they're blue, a TH1 color, it's really nice. Um, then I have some rear, rear window regulators and tons and tons of new hardware and bolts for the Sephiro, gas lines, fuses, th th pilot bearing, throw up bearing. I mean, I got just tons of crap here, guys. So I haven't been sleeping on the project. I've just been stockpiling everything that I need to try to get everything up and running in this car. It's just kind of sucks that I haven't been able to get it up and running yet. But I promise it should be up and running, hopefully in the next couple weeks. Just gonna have to wait and see. The only thing that I think I'm gonna be missing right now are the clutch pieces. Not the clutch, um, the slave cylinder, no, slave cylinder I have. The master cylinder and the cylinder, um, the clutch line. I need to get a hard line. But that's pretty much it. I think I have everything else, but I, I also need to get someone to come in and wire up the stuff. I, I just been driving me crazy. I've been trying to find all these wiring diagrams to figure it out myself, but it's just not happening. And I think I'm just gonna bite the bullet and go ahead and hire somebody to come in and do it. So, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But, yeah, some other cool stuff here. Grady Turbo Timer, brand new. Bought that for an Aristo that I had way back in the day, never installed it. Um, this is also a Turbo Timer harness for a JZS 147. Uh, Grady Type S blow valve that I actually powder coated. Now, I, this was originally purple, and then I had it powder coated this gold color because I wanted it to match uh, the other stuff that I had powder coated, but, you know, whatever. Sold the project. Now this, this is something I'm excited to install too. I ended up finding this in Japan on an auction site. Brand, almost brand new, HKS Super, it's not the Super Sequential. This is an HKS Sequential blow valve. This is the original from 1996. Still has the box. Obviously the box looks like crap, but I'm just impressed that it came with it. But look at the condition of this thing. It's like brand new. Brand spanking new. There's not a scratch on it. So I don't know if this was like a display piece or something, but it comes with the adapter for the GTST Skyline. And yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was a nice little come up. Has all the original piping and air tubing and the tube filter, I mean, all this stuff. I mean, if I open it up, oh, something else important for it. All the zip ties are here, original hardware, instructions, like everything, I just, it blew me away. And then this goes for the intake pipe. But anyway guys, I got tons of crap. I gotta just go ahead and install. I just gotta find the time. And honestly, I really wanted to do this stuff, but since the car is just sitting in the parking garage, uh, you've seen it, the lighting sucks. So I really wanted to save a lot of this stuff so I can go ahead and actually do a lot of this uh, somewhere in the daylight, probably over at Dave's house or I don't know, wherever I can find a spot to do it. But first, I gotta get the car running. Once I get the car running, all of this stuff that you guys see over here is gonna start going into the car and you guys are gonna to get to see all the process of how to install it. And honestly, a lot of this stuff you guys can do at home too. I, I got a lot of messages from people saying like, dude, you did that in a parking garage and you know, you did that with nothing like just hand tools. And yeah, it's super easy guys. It's really something anyone can do if you just gotta take the time and, and figure it out. I mean, that's honestly how I did it. I've just been doing that for years, figuring out things, breaking them, and then figuring out how to put them back together. But anyway, guys, I got to go ahead and get ready to go to Malacca. 
if you guys know any cool stuff to do in Malacca, let me know down in the comments below. Evelyn and I are going to be heading out there in the next like hour or so, so hopefully I can get this video up the same day, but I'll have to wait and see. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Stick around. There's more to come. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!